Merry Christmas. Here it is Christmas Eve, and typically during this time of day, we would have a Christmas pageant, you know, where the boys and girls of the parish would dress up as different characters and play a role in telling the story of Jesus' birth. And during the season of Advent, we would typically put the figurines in the major scene afresh, as we have here. This year has been a little different, as you well know. It's, it's been extremely different. And what I've decided to do for you this year is do something that was tradition in my family for, for many years. When I was growing up, when I was a little boy, um, we went to the early service and did the pageant. But when we got home, uh, we would actually get to open one Christmas present. And it was usually a new pair of pajamas that um, we liked opening that early Christmas present. And my sister and I, after putting on our new pajamas, would, um, would sit down in the living room around the tree. And my father would bring up a copy of, of his, his Bible. I had his Bible. And he would read us the story from Luke's Gospel of the birth of Jesus. And then, of course, after that, we would go off to Lake Church, where I was always an acolyte, and I lit the candles and did everything that I needed to do to serve the late service. But, I mean, as far as, as, far as back as I can remember, this was our family tradition, was to, between this church services, is to have my father sit down and read Luke's Gospel to my sister and I, and you probably heard it so many times before, but I'd like to read it for you now. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Polinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were complete for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for him. So there were in that same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch of their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be given a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. So it was when the angel had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made lively known the saying which we told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it were marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. We've just heard a tremendous story from Luke's gospel about the birth of Jesus and how it happened so many years ago in a stable in Bethlehem. And people can only imagine what it's like to be in a barn in a stable with the animals and the smells and the things that happened during that time 
you can imagine that Bethlehem was overcrowded. Um, there was no place for them to stay in a hotel or anything like that. There was, there was no holiday inn in Bethlehem. So what they did in, you know, back in the 13th century, it said that St. Francis of Assisi came up with a idea to build a, a barn type structure and fill it with figurines of, of the people um, to represent the scene and rebuild the scene of where Jesus' birth took place so people could reflect on and make themselves part of that story. And I'll explain a little bit how, how they do that here in a second. Um, I've always loved manger scenes. Um, as far as far back as I can remember, I've had a manger scene. I think um, uh, Kelly will tell you that I have uh, 10 manger scenes at my house, um, all different sizes. I've got miniature ones and I've got, I've got tall ones, um, but I just love the manger scenes. And, they're all different in their own little way. But I'd like to talk to you about some of the things that you'll see in a major scene. Um, first of all, we have uh, the barn, and this could be represented in any way and structure it is. And you know, this one, we have a nice, a nice barn looking here. We've got a thatched roof with greenery, and we've even got some lights up here with um, maybe the stars, and this is the star of Bethlehem that's shown. And as most barns do, we have straw on the, on the floor, and um, we even had some animals. We have a donkey on this side, and we have uh, lambs, sheep, we have lambs. So you can imagine another lamb here. You can imagine um, a stable. If you've ever been in a barn, you know what barns smell like. It's not very pleasant. It's not a real welcoming place for a baby. And I think that's what makes this story so different and so weird. It's because you have all these animals. Um, and cow. So in different manger scenes, you'll see different animals and different representations. And you may have goats and sheep and all this stuff. Maybe the sheep showed up with the shepherds. Who knows? We don't know. All we know that most of the time in the major scene depiction, you'll see um, different types of animals, donkeys and cows and, and sheep. Of course, this, this poor family showed up to Bethlehem and they did not have a place to stay. We have um, Joseph, who's referred to in the scripture. And we have the woman he has um, promised to marry. They've already made the marriage contract. Uh, Mary, who is pregnant. And we have, of course, the baby Jesus. And oftentimes, Mary will be depicted as um, prayerful on her knees or stooping low and bent over, um, symbolizing her humility. And Joseph will always um, often be represented as, as standing tall, kind of, you know, hunched over, reverent. Um, nothing really spectacular special. So, of course, you have the Holy Family here, Mary, Joseph, and, and Christ child. And then um, oftentimes you'll have shepherds. Now, this is where it gets interesting because at St. James here, we have um, some unique looking different shepherd folks that, um, that are here. And oftentimes throughout the centuries, different figures have been made to represent different cultures and different ways. So. Um, Oftentimes, say in an Asian set, you'll have um, very Asian looking creatures. In a European set, you will have very European looking creatures, um, features on the, on the face. Um, this guy looks very Irish to me. I don't know exactly what 
uh, what it is about him that looks Irish, um, but he's a shepherd. He has a long, um, a flowing cape. And then this guy is probably dressed more like um, somebody in the Middle East would have been as a shepherd, even though he's probably got much lighter skin than somebody in the Middle East would have. Obviously a European depiction, but he's also a shepherd. Visiting the, visiting the Christ child. And we have another shepherd here that's kneeling. We'll put one back over inside. And maybe the shepherds brought the sheep with them because they wouldn't just leave their sheep out in the field. Um, so here we have it. We have shepherds. We have the holy family. We have the animals and we have the barn. And of course, the star is here. And even though it's not in Luke's gospel, we can read the gospel according to Matthew. And we learn about the visit of the Magi or the wise men. And there's no depiction to how many there were, um, just that there were wise men who came to the East and they presented the Christ child with three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they followed a star over a great distance. Um, some of you may have seen um, in the past couple of days, it's been visible in the sky where Saturn aligns with Jupiter and the moons of Jupiter lining up. Um, people are calling that the Bethlehem star or even the Christmas star. Um, don't know exactly whether that is um, truthful or not, whether that is in fact what the, um, the Magi saw when they looked at the sky. Um, but it is a rare occurrence for all those planetary bodies to line up and um, shine. And it happens about every 800 and some odd years. So I'm not an astrologer or astronomer, so um, excuse me for my ignorance on that. But I, I do think that that has something to tell us. So we have um, the three kings here. Um, historically, there were um, the church is referred to the three kings, even though they don't know how many because it wasn't in the Bible. And the church has even named them over the years, Caspar, Malchior, and Balthazar. Um, they, they don't know exactly which one carried what. We don't know whether who had frankincense, who had gold, who had gold but I don't think it really matters. Mm. And it's interesting that the depiction of the Magi, um, the depiction of the Magi is always has always has a, a very dark skin um, figure, and I don't know exactly what that comes from. I don't know enough of, of history to know, but the three kings represent the three gifts being brought to the Christ child: gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they have a story of their own, but I don't want to get all into that. I do want us to focus on why we have this scene here. Why is it important that we have a manger scene? And what a manger scene might be able to tell us for our life. The first thing I want us to do is understand why Francis of Assisi probably did it back in the, the 13th century. He said that he did it so that people would be able to put themselves in the story. So looking at the story that we have here acted out in figures and knowing what we just read from scripture, I want you to put yourself in the scene. Who are you? Are you a lamb watching what's happening, going on around you? Seeing the shepherds show up in great awe and kneel down at the cradle or at the manger scene of the manger of this child. You know what a manger is, is actually the feeding trough um, where the cows and the, and, the, and the goats and everything ate from. Are you a shepherd that got the news out in the pasture? And did you come and see what's happening? Are you Joseph? Could not find a place for your family to stay. Are you Mary, being possibly scared and confused? Are you one of the kings that shows up with a gift?
or you're the donkey over in the corner trying to figure out what's going on. I've never really picked one character or another. I've always tried to think of the story from a particular perspective. I most often take either Joseph or Mary um, because I think their story is what we're most familiar with. But I think it would be pretty awesome to be possibly one of the shepherds. Now, this guy looks pretty clean, right? Shepherding was a tough job. Shepherding, um, they were a little rough around the edges, um, shepherds were. And shepherd was the only thing between life and death for the sheep sometimes, and they protected the sheep. Jesus is even referred to as, as a shepherd. Um, it's amazing how we just let ourselves be put into the story. Where do you see yourself? How is it that something so spectacular, so awesome for Jesus to be born, for God to come into this world? I wonder why it happened this way. I wonder why God came to be with us in a barn. Why not a royal palace? Why not being born to somebody important? Why a simple carpenter and a peasant boy? Why is it so spectacular for this poor family to be visited by folks who came from a great distance? Follow the star. What was so special that an angel appeared to shepherds that were out in the field just doing their job? Tell them about what happened. That God was here and that God loved them. that the anointed one of God, the Christ, was being born in a farm in Bethlehem. I think it's a pretty remarkable story. I think it's a wonderful story. And I think that every time we go through and we set up our manger scene or our creche, creche is actually the French word um, that comes from the manger or the feeding trough that I talked about before, um, but it's it's come to involve the whole scene itself of Jesus' birth. Um, and that's why we call it a crash or a manger scene is, is more than accurate. Why is it that this has so much meaning for us? Why do we do this in our churches? Why do we do this in our homes? Possibly under the Christmas tree. I want us to think about the story of Jesus and Jesus being born in a manger in Bethlehem every time we set up this scene. And I want us to think about how strange and different it must have been. Babies aren't typically born in barns, at least not in the 21st century. I can't imagine many babies were born in barns back when Jesus was born. But nonetheless, to a poor family, God decided to enter this world in a strange time of political turmoil and a bunch of things going on. The Romans were oppressing the Hebrews and it was, it was just a mess. God broke forth in this world, a symbol of hope in a newborn baby, a God of flesh and blood. I hope that when you look at this scene, you will remember the wonderful and 
awesome gift that God has done of giving us Jesus.